hello cyborgs and welcome to another a lot of beatrix potter video in this one i'm going to talk about the tales of beatrix potter so the things that beatrix potter actually wrote so while i was reading the biography by linda lear which i will link my video on down below i read contemporaneously the different tales by beatrix potter as they were talked about in the biography though i did have to catch up quite a bit it took a while for me to get my copy this is my used edition of the complete tales of beatrix potter which it's actually not the com it's not the complete works of Beatrix Potter but it's the complete like Peter Rabbit tales in that like series that she did with a total of I believe 23 works. I give this collection overall four out of five stars. It was a really enjoyable lovely reading experience. Let me show you the naked hardcover. It will also make it easier to show you illustrations without that slippy slip cover on there. So my favorite stories in here had a lot to do with the illustrations as well as the themes. I think the tale of Peter Rabbit is definitely a most beloved classic for a reason. I find that it story was really tight and it had some very beautiful illustrations. This one is my favorite and I did find that even though I didn't think I would enjoy the bunny stories quite as much as everybody else in the world seemed to enjoy them, they she wrote a total of four bunny stories. I actually did enjoy them quite a lot and the Flopsy Bunnies I thought was a pretty harrowing tale and I really really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed the tale of Squirrel Nutkin. Not so much for for the story itself, which is kind of, I don't know, a Squirrel Nutkin's a bit of an asshole, but the illustrations are so autumnal. And I also found myself really invested in the world building of how these squirrels would give animal sacrifices to Old Brown the Owl and just like the cannibalistic nature of that. It just made me ponder quite a bit for a child story. The Tailor of Gloucester is a beautiful winter story and some of the scenes in this really reminded me a lot of the Christmas Carol and the twisty snowy streets that you see in like the Muppet Christmas Carol or other Christmas Carol movie adaptations. I also loved the cat a lot and I thought that this had a really tight moral to the story and it was really enjoyable especially knowing that the story was based in some historical fact. The tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse also stood out for me. I really loved seeing the insect illustrations in this story and just getting more than just the woodland creatures as illustrations. I also thought that it was a very cute theme as well and I think Tidy Little Mouse is very very cute. My favorite tale by far though was the tale of Jeremy Fisher. That frog was so cute. I also like how this story really made me ponder the circle of life and how these anthropomorphized intelligent talking animals are still potentially meals for other animals and the picture with Sir Isaac Newton and Ptolemy Tortoise I think his name is just made me laugh out loud. It was so cute. So though I didn't really appreciate Beatrix Potter's stories as a child because there were no mermaids and so it was dead to me, as an adult, I just think these stories are just so wonderful. The illustrations are incredible. The stories are just beautifully written. I, I actually really enjoy her prose. And even though some of them might not feel quite as finished as a story we would expect nowadays, there's just such a charm about them that makes me understand why these are con these continue to be really treasured stories and a staple in children's literature. I'm really glad that I decided to read the tales again and not just read the biography and give no really credence to her work because it really made me appreciate her as a person and it really brought the biography to life. There definitely were some stories in there though that just didn't tickle my fancy or I didn't particularly like and also The Fairy Caravan by Beatrix Potter was something that I didn't get along with very well. I ended up giving this two out of five stars. This is one of the final works that she ever produced. It is an episodic tale of a guinea pig tuppany and a traveling animal circus that he joins after running away from his village. We follow the circus troupe as they travel through the countryside in England telling each other stories. Overall, I found the episodic nature of this didn't really work for me and because of that episodic nature, when the end of the book finally came, I didn't feel like it was a satisfying ending. I felt like the story could have stopped two chapters earlier or two chapters later. It just felt like it was a random point of, of stopping. The illustrations also, there weren't as much of them. This was more of a chapter book rather than a picture book. And the illustrations that were included weren't 
amazing for me. These were produced toward the end of her life when her eyesight was failing, so perhaps that's some of it. There were a couple line drawings that I really enjoyed, which I'll insert pictures of here. Overall, though, I found the pros kind of cluttered and confusing. I didn't connect with any of the characters, any of the main characters very much. It seemed more about hearing the tales they wanted to tell you rather than connecting with them as individuals and connecting with their story. I did enjoy the inclusion of fairies and kind of a magicalness about the circus, and I did also really like the chapter, I think it was called Demerara Sugar, which is pretty much like a Christmas chapter, Christmas in the Woodlands. That was, that was cute, but overall this was kind of boring and I didn't really understand the point and it made me feel bad because this was one of Beatrix's most beloved things and she felt that all of the tales in there were ones that like achingly needed to be out in the world and she was really glad that she got to publish it but I just didn't really feel connected to it, unfortunately. So those are some of my opinions on the works by Beatrix Potter. I think there's a reason why some of them are highly remembered and talked of and why some of them have kind of been forgotten. And unless you are definitely a Beatrix Potter completionist, I don't think that you need to really seek out those works that are more obscure and harder to find. Which stories by Beatrix Potter did you grow up with and which are your favorites? I would love to know. Thank, thank, thank you for watching and until next time, continue to be lovely.